Hello everyone. As you may remember, in our first discussion, we've discussed about how language is acquired, right? The L1 and the L2. Remember, pamo? Saon pag teach and use the correct language, and we've basically learned the um, fundamental concepts of language, okay? Especially in acquisition, in terms of acquiring a language. But now, we are specifically in lesson two, entitled Languages in Curriculum in the K-12. I mean language curriculum in the K to twelve program. Language curriculum. I mean, the languages curriculum in the K-12 program. We, we are still talking about language, probably then uh, more important than we talked about on the first lesson, because this one talks about the very problems of the curriculum, K-12 curriculum, good mismo. Kinsay product ng K-12 curriculum, mga product ng senior high school. Product mo tanan? Walay old curriculum din eh? Wala? Just like the other section, I noticed na naa silay uh, na, um, na ang section sa 5.30 to 7, it consists of at least two students nga. Wala nag senior high school. So, it's fair enough that we can, we are on the same page, no? I'm also the product of the first batch of the K-12 curriculum. And <clears throat> the Problems are still arising in terms of languages. Okay, we've learned uh, how to acquire language effectively and how to use them effectively on our first lesson. But here we will talk about the difficulties of languages. Okay, the difficulties of languages within the curriculum na K to twelve. Okay, there are existing problems, mang good in terms of our language, especially sa English. Okay, English grammar na tamang focus. That's why sa previous activity, as you can relate, no? as you may remember also, we've talked about grammar and you provided an answer or answers for grammar and should grammar be taught in school, no? those kinds of questions. Now, those questions will be related to our topic tonight. And those answers of yours will serve as your motivation in this lesson. Okay? Basically, we are talking about the domains of literacy. Okay? The domains of literacy. The domains of literacy the language building process and lastly the ESL grammar so these structures are the ones that will be the guide for us. No? This structure rather will serve as our guide in tonight's lesson because we will partly talk about the domains of literacy of the children. Okay? Because as elementary teachers or an aspiring elementary teachers, you are required to be an efficient teacher in the future. And by doing that, we need, we need to bridge language as our main source of teaching and especially sa English language which talks about ESL grammar or English as a second language grammar. Let's focus on this one, 
Okay? Because the article here in lesson 2 suggests the problem of ESL grammar, which talked about also and relates to the languages curriculum and the problems encountered uh, by uh, linguistic problems, no, specifically linguistic problems encountered within the K-12 curriculum. Kung saan mangyod na mga problema ang naa within sa curriculum na to. Karon. Okay? And how we should solve them um, so that we can help improve such education na to. Now, there was this guy interviewed. There was this uh, person interviewed. No? His name was Keith Foles. In an interview, he addressed that the fact that the focus of traditional teacher training will not suffice in preparing the teachers for the increasing numbers of ESL students. Meaning to say, the problem nga kung gingon sa ESL learners, okay, is the fact nga na ay mga English language learners that are very large in number. More to that later. But Here's what's going on. Our teachers in our Department of Education are public teachers. Okay? Karon, this article suggests that even though na sila mga seminars and trainings on different disciplines and different subjects, so mathematics, English, sciences, lots of seminars, di ba, sa ato public teachers? No? Na notice ninyo. Okay, so, we have, uh, they have seminars, but still, ang problems naga arise gihapon sa atong curriculum. Why is that? What's really the reason? It's because of the incompetence of the teachers and both teachers and students sa ESL grammar. Because we should focus on teaching the English language here as a second language. Okay? Let's not focus on how we acquire second language, but we are now focusing on the problems yod nga na sa ESL. And additionally, the increasing numbers of ESL dictate the problem. Because as teachers, again, kinsay na ay mga anak din, may ask one again, once again, kinsay na ay bata, na ay anak, na ay offspring. Okay, pila ka bukay mong bata? Isa. Do you think that it was easy raising one child? No. Di ba? The answer is no. Automatically. One child lang. How about sa ato teacher, we are regarded as the second parents of our students. No? We are regarded as second, as second parents, therefore, we should take care of the students. But, here's the thing here. The problem is, daghan ka yung loon ang isang classroom. How can you manage Lisod ganit pag-manage sa kasul. How can you manage 50 to 60 souls within the classroom? Mas kinun, saan pa ni mong seminar, di ba? Saan pa ni mong seminar, still, you will not be an effective teacher because of the numbers or the increasing numbers of the students. Okay? That is one of the problem. And... Second problem here is the competence of the learners and teachers sa ESL grammar. Okay? What do I mean by the competence of the ESL teachers and learners? Because here, K-12 have taken an extensive coursework in math, as I said, language, art, science, or other content, but still, there, there are existing grammatical errors committed by the students and teachers. What kind of errors are those? Simply lang. On sa mga mga mistakes, ang phrase, clause, sentence, nga gina-commit, ang gina-construct ng teachers and students. Vice versa. The reason why we have these kind of problems sa atong curriculum about languages is because of the incorrect way of teaching of the teachers and the tolerance given by the teachers to the correct or the incorrect things. Kumot na kayo barbecue. Way batasan. So, the English language learners, or take note ha, the ELL, ay sa kay, nalobat na siya. 
Okay. Can you tell me if maklaro ko sa video? Maklaro ko? Okay. See, that's, that's good. Okay. The ELL refers to English language learners or basically everyone that is or every learner that is learning a language, no? Can you consider yourself, class, as an ELL? Yes, because you are a learner of a language, basically, no? Sa atong pag-learn, sa how we acquire language, you're considered as an ELL. But we are referring here the ELL sa mga elementary and secondary students na under DepEd. Fortunately, di nata under ng DepEd. We are under CHED. Okay? But here, the problem we should focus on is the problem under K-12 and how students are encountering those kinds of problems even at an early stage of their lives. One way of dealing with the problems is to deal also with the grammatical um, inconsistencies sa mga bata. And according to this uh, source, no, according to this findings, this article and to this research, it's not me that I'm making this stuff up, but I am referring to the findings na naas diri na article. Why should we learn now? Why K-12 teachers such as you, Pohon, Pohon, no, by God's grace, why K-12 teachers, public teachers to be specific, need to know about ESL grammar issues? It's because of these common mistakes. There are commonly uh, there are phrases or sentences na commonly misused by the students and tolerated by the teachers. On sa mga um, simply ngayon kayo as I read this article, no, I am shocked na nung naasya sa list. Although it's very simple to correct, but it's a commonly misused phrase or um, sentence. She was born on 1999. She was born on 1999. What's the mistake there? What word? On. Noticeable enough, di ba? But why? On sa dapat na? In. Di ka po, hindi mo yung unog. At. I was born at 1999. She was... Born in 1999. When you talk about year, grammar suggests using in. When you talk about city, grammar suggests to use in. Or the proper usage of preposition. The reason why, again, we are encountering these kinds of problems, class, is because of the tolerance given by the teachers. Even if kabalo ko ana nga mali, wala na akong gisaway ang student. This is very crucial sa inyo especially elementary grade teachers mo. Okay? You strike the iron while it's hot. Imold na daan ang bata while he still or she still young. That's very crucial of you, I'm telling you. Because Again, in our lesson one, we learned that age there is a factor in acquiring language. Inood. No? Lisod tudluan, pagtigulang na. Lisod magpaka-fluent sa isa ka language if tigulang na. Especially sa L2. Because here we are focusing on ESL. Grammar. English as a second language. Wala tamang focus sa L1. Forget about that. But here... English as a second language has a lot of problems. Sa grammar palang daan, which is our focus now. Sa grammar palang daan, we are noticing, or the Department of Education at, le at least noticed these silly problems. Kung saan man ato pag improve sa atong teaching if this grammar. The rules and uh, linguistic features are not corrected by the teachers. So, this goes to show nga dili irasayaan ng bata din eh, na in one, on one side, di ba? But it, it's also the, the mistake of the teachers because our incompetence will result to their incompetence as well. We must remember that we cannot teach what we do not have. 
trite expression of educators, di ba? Commonly used words of educators. But that's true. As teachers, we are expected to be the fountains and source of knowledge within the classroom, the provider of knowledge, but not just that, no? We also, at the same time, provider pakaw ng knowledge and manager pagyud ng classroom while managing 60 souls at the same time, synchronously, live, face to face. How can you do that? How on earth can you possibly do that effectively? Do you think nga sa 50 kabok sujante effectively yun ni mo matudlo ang imong dapat itudlo or naka-guarantee bigyud ka 100% that those uh, students will learn all the things and absorb all the information that you are providing to them? Dili, di ba? You cannot assure, I cannot even assure na 100% mo naka-learn sa akong karon at this moment how much more sa mga bata na taas ang tolerance nila or taas ang ilang possibility to get, to get distra distracted to many other things. How can we correct their mistakes, specifically grammatical mistakes, if we or you yourselves cannot be grammatical enough when writing an essay? When you yourself cannot even distinguish what's correct or incorrect prepositions. So it starts with us. Because naturally, problems arise. Even in this curriculum, even in this department, no, sa atong field of education, natural yun ang problema. Kinsay wala problema individually. Wala may problema. So, naul. Daghan, dag problema. No? In our individual experiences, we are suffering and experiencing our unique problems right now, individuals. Financially, academically, pinsay nag thesis na din eh. Pinsay nag thesis na. Thesis na mo? No. Ya pa ang struggle. Ya pa. Research to na. You might be suffering to that kind of thing right now. We all have. That goes to show that we all have our individual problems. How much more to the kinds of problems that we shall be solving as teachers. That's expected of us. Because again, we cannot provide something that is not present within us. One way to improve that is to be competent enough sa atong kaugalingon. Okay? Why we need to be competent as ESL teachers in the K-12? If mag-teacher yun mo, then good for you. Because you can apply the certain things you learned while you're still in the training, while you still, while you are still in school, and while you're still um, perfecting your skills here. Another example, commonly misused phrase. And by the way, these examples, no, according to the Department of Education, were believably unnoticed until such time na ginagamit siya ng majority of the students, especially elementary pupils. So, how sad is that? No? How, how sad is that knowing uh, nagagamit na taog mga incorrect statements and ungrammatical clauses, phrases, and sentences? Another one. She should help you. That's listed here. She should help you. Unsay mali? Helps. It's very obvious. Sakit kay salinga, di ba? Even if we are not native speakers of English, we still have this common sense, no? On what is grammatical. Pinaka basic man lamang, at the very least. We still know. 
she should help you. Dapat help. But the findings here suggest nga ginagamit yun siya ng students most frequently. And how sad is that, dear educators? Nga we are teaching this generation and the previous generation and maybe next generation the incorrect thing. That's why this subject is introduced to you to correct the flaw. You will be correcting those mistakes because that's our job. As Mambilarama said, our very dean, as human beings, we are fallible. We are capable and expected to make and commit mistakes as human beings. But when, Timan eh, when you're within the classroom, your mistakes should be limited. Yes, your mistakes should be limited. Everything that comes out of your mouth should be planned, should be correctly composed, and must be a remarkable statement or remarkable piece of information para mo tatakyod sa mga bata and can be applied outside of this class to the real world which matters out there. Mga commonly mistakes ng mga estudyante. So, simple logic, how can you correct that? How can you straighten their, how can you make their paths straight if you yourself is crooked enough para sa mag-correct sa'yo mo kagulingon? You cannot even articulate pag pa oralon ka mo. You cannot even write effectively, although there are, I am concluding here that all of us here are not perfect. But please, each day is a chance to get better, to be better. And one way of resolving this kind of problem, the grammatical problem, is to be articulate enough, to be knowledgeable enough of the language, to be effective enough as teachers in teaching the ESL. No, because our problems here naturally are the large, large numbers of the students. Large numbers of the ELLs. Or the English language learners. Right? So, gigotom ng yud ko. Nang humot na ang taba. Another thing, where were you, where were you when the accident was happened? What's the problem there? Where were you, asa ka, katong nahitabo ang aksidente, where were you when the accident was happened? Where? Where? Were? Ang inyong pasabot? Were nga. W-E-R-E. Where? Dapat ba dyan? Where are you? When the accident was happened? Ano? Was. Because the word happened there is already in its past form. It's very redundant of you to add was. Where were you? When the accident happened, dapat. Where were you when the accident was happened? No, that's very redundant of you. It's like saying na exam na mo next next week. You cannot say that in English language. That's incorrect. That's unacceptable. Although in some contexts, acceptable siya. But technically speaking, it is not. You cannot say that next, next week, you, you should also, as an alternative, you might want to say a week after next week. You, cannot, you, you can't say to your students, you should stand up 
It's very redundant of you. To stand is already a verb. To sit is already a verb. Sit down. Take a seat. Sit, please. Ano lang? Sit down. Redundant. Meaning, balik-balik. In grammar, that's totally unacceptable. Okay? Because I am training you here to be knowledgeable in this one so that we can solve the problems under this one. Kuha. Sometime. We must avoid grammatical problems. These are, na-notice ninyo, gagmay lang kayo mga problema, no? But it affects our generation, our students, our future. Because we are disinforming them. And we have the power to correct that because we are the providers of information within the classroom. We are even considered as the loco parentis. Take note. Loco parentis. The term for as a second parent. As a second parent. And talking about the large number of the students, we are required to have this concept also in teaching. The so called with itness. With itness. Or the very strategy the teachers use to be holistically aware of the surroundings and the happenings within the classroom. For example, as I am writing on the board, mas kinagtalikod ko, I am still aware of what you are doing. I should be aware of what you're doing. Mas kinagtalikod ko, to write something, no, I'm not facing you all, but I am still, or I should be still aware na na ay nagsaba-saba during a part. And someone is talking here. I should be aware of that. That's the concept of withedness. You're within the classroom while you're still in it. Withedness ang tawag. As I am looking here, while I'm talking, I know through my peripherals, when I agree ng hand uh, to to express something in class, I know that if I look someone in the eye, if wala maminaw, meaning wala giyod na interest sa klase. You should have that concept as a teacher, because one thing dagan ang isujante, mahina lang ang kalaban, okay? Mahina ang kalaban. How can you manage those numbers? Di nagani makaya ni mam na mag-alaga ng isa. It's not easy daw. It's not an easy experience. It was a difficult experience, in fact. Although, di ligyod na magpatutoy anang bataa, but we still are the second parents. Kuha. Okay. That's the ultimate content on why, and that's also the ultimate answer, on why we should, why we, future K-12 teachers, no? high school teachers, elementary teachers, especially sa inyo ha, this is very crucial on you. Elementary, mga bata, pag yun, ang behavior, yun ako. Why lang provide kag content na nagsumbagay? This poses a challenge to all of you. And you should be pressured right now. Pressure na mo? Pressure na mo? Ang sa mga di yun mag-teacher, di yun ma-pressure, no? Pero sa mga mag-teacher, you should be pressured. Okay? And it's okay to be pressured. That's part of being human. What's not part of you being a human is pag di mo i-correct ang mistake. Okay? If you don't fight, for what's right, then you should not be a teacher because we teach something and we cannot teach something that is wrong. Nga na lang ang logic. Okay? 
That's why as K-12 teachers, we need to know and understand ESL grammar. Parts of speech, no? dapat aware ta na. When to use noun, when to use verb, adjectives, interjections, adverbs, pronouns. Tanan! Natunlo na sa inyo ha. Diba? You are aware of that. High school pa na. Okay? Punctuations, proper punctuations, when to use comma and period so that he, it will be presentable enough. Even maskin magsulat ka, you will use the written system or through speaking. That still applies. Okay? So I guess you already grasped the answer of the question why we need to be aware of the grammar of the ESL grammar it's because of the existing and subsisting problems in our field okay next thing when we lack something or when we lack our competence if we do not have the knowledge of the so-called <coughs> ESL grammar, it still affects the K-12 program. Again, we are dismantling and we are destroying the future generation if for those simple things lang. In relationships, of course, in our friends, especially sa atong significant other, do you agree that little things matter? Yes. Yes. Well, still apply sa atong education. Simple ka man ang mistake. In naman sa noon, basic grammar ang sus. Okay ka ton. Still okay? No. Little efforts of ours to correct so those mistakes will be later on appreciated by the future generation. I cannot be this type of person sa inyong atubangan right now even though I'm still not perfect. I cannot be like this if it weren't for those people, especially for those teachers, na competent enough to teach our generation, our batch. Imagine if dealing with competency teachers at ubangan, what will the students learn? Sagawas, even so inside the classroom. None, nothing. Because nothing is expected from you if you do not have something to give to the class. One way to do that and one way to resolve all of this, develop yourselves. Read something valuable. Be more articulate. Learn new words. Learn how to construct and compose properly and correctly. Instead of scrolling to nonsensical things in social media, have something to read. Reading is the only means to improve your vocabulary. One of the means, so to say. It generates new sense of information if you just try to improve yourself every day. It's our job it's my job and it's your job by God's grace in the future to teach a human being. You're not teaching a robot. You're teaching a human being. If I'm teaching a robot right now, I will just let you read all these paragraphs and give the module and then sabta na lang inyo. I will not exert an effort. But I still care for the generation and for the welfare of our future individuals. That's why this job is not easy. It's not in fact a job. It's a profession. Diba? Kag may kaigsweldo ang teachers. Then why do you sign up for this one? Why did you sign up for this one? Hopefully you will learn to love the profession. Because the society needs us. Your children need you. And please, 
as a human being, as a human being, nihangi o kapot ko ninyo, please do the right thing so that you can do and teach the right thing. Umot na kayong barbecue. Distractor yun kayo, no? Questions? That's pretty much for our lesson too. Questions? Clarifications? Additional information? Wala na? Donation? Wala na? Wala na yun. As human beings, tagutom na ko. Nakasimot biya po. So I have olfactory senses also functioning. Basi maluoy po mo, bitaw. If you don't have any questions, class, wala na bitaw. Follow up. Gusto mo add? Wala yung gusto mag-share sa ilang mga on how they wanted to improve them, their selves and help the world because the world is falling apart and we need to collaborate and to do something good to resolve the catastrophe we are experiencing because I believe oh, di ba dyan? Chara ba dyan ito? Yana? Pangunta na ba? Okay, class dismissed. Goodbye everyone.